Okay, last story of the day. We're going out there. And when I say out there, we're going from outer space to ice in your face. I don't know. I couldn't come up with anything for that. So, apparently, this, again, this seems to be a political episode, but it just happened to be that way. So, what's going on, according to this truth seeker, this man above men, this sphere being, sphere being? That's his website. So there's this guy named Corey Good. So quick info on Corey Good. Corey Good has been kidnapped multiple times by the United States Air Force. I mean, just like they've come in and they've taken him and they're like, how are you revealing all of our secrets? And Corey Good's like, I can't tell you. And the Air Force is like, tell us, who's the leak? And Corey Good's like, I won't tell you the air force lets them go because what you know that's what military is known for they're known for taking people prisoner and then letting them go when they don't get what they want this has happened multiple times poor Corey good being abducted where are you getting your secrets who is leaking our info to you and Corey good's like i will not tell you and then one day Corey Good is taken in by a secret U.S. Air Force agent who works for Special Space Command named Sigmund. And the agent goes, who's giving you this information? And Corey Good goes, aliens are talking to my brain. And the agent goes, yes, you're right. <laughs> aliens are talking to your brain. Here's even more secret documents for you to leak. Together, we can destroy the pedophiles who are taking over the planet. So now Corey Good is no longer being kidnapped by the U.S. Air Force. He's working for them, along with his telepathic alien baby in his brain. And what he has to report this time is that special teams of soldiers from around the world, it's like a straight-up G.I. Joe, are capturing high-level world powerful pedophiles get down on the ground pedophile no i own eight banks in europe stay down watch i'm gonna get flagged for hate speech because of that accent the pedophile anti-pedophile special forces teams have been raiding groups across the united states and they're shocked shocked at how deeply these people are in the U.S. government. This team has been in effect, by the way, in the middle since the middle of the election. But since Donald Trump's become president, it's become totally ramped up. And at this point, the special forces, some of them have actually been fired, unfortunately, from this made-up made job. They're having to collect made-up unemployment. They've been fired from this made-up job for killing low-level pedophiles. That has to be the worst description ever. Then not only are you a pedophile, you're a low-level pedophile. That's like you only have sex with baby ducks. Like, you don't even qualify to be as gross as a regular pedophile. You're just a low-level pedophile. Other pedophiles look down on you. Anyway, so these special forces squads, a couple of these guys have been fired from this made-up job because they've been killing these low-level pedophiles because they're just so angry. Now, before we get into the weird part, let me just do an aside. Yes. There are, we do have a pedophile problem. It's everywhere, and it's, t it's super gross. Before I go any further, I think I need to make this clear. I'm not making fun of pedophilia. And yes, there are powerful people out there who are pedophiles. What I have a problem with is the idea that a pedophilic network is running the planet. I think that idea is laughable. I think that there are private groups of people who want to have their vision of the world put onto everyone else. I think that is a that is such a basic description of the Illuminati or conspiracies. I think that's fair. I think that if I had a billion dollars, I would want people I would want to leave my impact on the world and I would want the world to see the world as I see it because I think I know what I'm doing is right. So when you have George Soros or you have the what is it, the Koch brothers, the Coach brothers? They're both the same thing. They're opposing forces, but they're both the same thing. They both have massive amounts of money, and they use that money to reshape the world and how they see it. I do not think that they're both pedophiles 
that, that and no a million other pedophiles that are running the planet. And if the Coach brothers knew that George Soros was a pedophile or vice versa, that'd be the first attack line every single day. You know, one of them goes, you know, my opponent believes that climate change is not man-made. And the other people would be like, he's a pedophile. That would be the only conversation ever. So either they're both pedophiles, and in that case, it doesn't matter because everyone's a pedophile, or one is and one isn't, and that would be the only line of attack ever. This person believes that taxes on corporations should be 10%. That person's a pedophile. That would be every single conversation. And all of these stories would be buried 100% of the time because if everyone in the power structure, even let's say 10% or 2% of the world's power structure was powerful enough to not only hide their own crimes but initiate other people into their group, we would never hear about any of these stories. Corey Good would be a smudge at the bottom of the Empire State Building. So that's my problem with these stories about these worldwide groups of super powerful people that are doing this Illuminati satanic pedophilia group. There are powerful people who are pedophiles. Absolutely. There are networks of pedophiles. Absolutely. Those are facts. We catch them. We bust them. Not as often as we should, but we do. But this idea like Corey Good's putting forth that local police are in on it. Local reporters are in on it. Low level, low level, low level politicians are in on, in on it. Entertainment industry is on, in on it. Politicians, I mean, like, if the local cop is in on it, then he's the weakest link. Why would, why is he part of your global, why is he banging kids with George Soros in Vienna? It doesn't make sense. Think about this stuff for one second, please. It gets me, you know, the reason why these stories get me so upset is this is a problem. And it makes it into this wacky conspiracy. And like I said, it only gets weird. And when I say it's a problem, I mean pedophilia is a problem. The story gets even weirder. So not only are there special forces squads going around, kicking down the doors of the local ombudsman for the newspaper, being like, get on the ground, get on the ground. Show me your hands. There's another, there's another level to it. Sometimes these kids that are taken by the podunk sheriff of Nebraska... He, they're taken to Antarctica and given to draconian reptiles to beat up and get even more molested. So apparently in Antarctica, there are... Oh, and I'm not supposed to talk about this either. According to Corey Good, this is not supposed to be information that is revealed in any way, shape, or form. Even though he reveals it on his totally public website, and he's still alive, and charging $110 if you want to watch a webinar with him. Anyways... In Antarctica, there are these huge research and development bases to build these giant spaceships. That the Draconians, which the reptilians live in, they live... Ant Why Antarctica? Why are lizard people in the ice? I don't know. Why aren't they in Brazil, which is, like, equally dense? But anyways, they're in Antarctica for some reason. Lizards in the ice, because those things go so well together. And they're building these giant spaceships, and sometimes they bring kids. They ship kids all the way from, you know... Iowa, that's where all those missing kids are going. They're putting them on planes and flying, but probably releasing chemtrails as they fly across the globe to land in Antarctica to be disembarked and then aliens beat them up and make them slaves. I don't know. I like to think at some point the special forces are going to be here and they're going to say, if you want to kill a serpent, <laughs> cut off its head. And then they like go to Antarctica and assault these huge bases. But, I mean, it's not going to because it's all made up. You know, I, I just, it, it boggles my mind sometimes. Like, I can get when someone who has a blog and they write something completely ridiculous. And you're like, okay, you know, whatever. When someone has an entire organization dedicated to spreading arguably false ideas. It's just mind-boggling. And to, to end cap this, I think that's, that's the same way I look at Alex Jones. I think he's just an entertainer. I think this Corey Good guy's an entertainer. I don't think he was ever captured by the U.S. Air Force. I don't think he ever had telepathic visions from an alien. I don't think that there's top-secret kill squads moving through the United States shooting pedophiles. I think that there are hard-working investigators shutting down pedophile rings constantly and more pop up and i think the government this government is doing a good faith effort in shutting down human trafficking i do think those things are true 
The, and those are interesting stories. Don't add reptilians into it. Just tell... I think the story itself, that we've had massive human trafficking arrests in the past year, and we're making a good faith effort, and we're changing the laws that if you are involved in this, we are going to hurt you legally and financially. We will shut you down. I think that's interesting. You don't have to add space aliens into it, or hit squads that are killing low-level pedophiles and other people are like, Barry, what did you? And he's like, I just couldn't stand looking at that son of a bitch one more time. Like, I don't know. I I think, the st- I, th- and I think the story of Sandy Hook is interesting in and of itself. It's tragic. You don't have to add this conspiracy stuff to it. I just think that this idea that the world is not already completely messed up and has a bunch of evil in it. And I have to add space aliens and telepathy and starships and stargates and all of that stuff. I think it's just a little... I I, I think it's disingenuous because I honestly think that if Corey Good wrote a book about America has a pedophile problem, here are the stats, here are some witness accounts, here are some victim accounts... Here's a couple of words from the perpetrators and, you know, why they did it or how they feel now. Here's some, you know, we'll talk to these investigators. That book is not going to sell as well as book after book after book of aliens are in my brain and they're eating your children. You're not going to be able to pay $110 for a webinar with Corey Good talking about real life events. So you just make stuff up. And I think that's the trap that Alex Jones fell into. I think he probably did honestly believe that 9-11 was an inside job. And as time progressed, the theories got even weirder and weirder. And eventually, it catches up with you because you stop being a journalist and you start becoming an entertainer and you become a caricature of yourself. So, yeah, I mean, I think that is the same thing with what happened with Alex Jones. I think that it's easier to sell a fantastic story. You may believe in it at first, or you may not. But what happens is it starts to sell very well. If I start doing videos, let's say I do a video series where I talk about how cryptids are invading the national parks. And those videos and those podcasts get downloaded multiple, multiple times. My first inclination is going to make more of those. And eventually, as content starts to dry up, I'm going to start making it up. Because that's how I make money. I don't make any money off this show, but you get where I'm coming from. You start off with a conspiracy that you genuinely believe in, and people respond to it. You make money, and you get used to that money, and you got to start making more money. I don't think, I personally, again, don't know much about Alex Jones other than what I've read. I don't, he doesn't cross me from what I read back in the day, especially. He doesn't cross me as someone who's genuinely a racist person or a homophobic person. But if during the time when people were talking a lot about the invasion of Europe and refugees and all of that coming to the West, he starts making more videos because he's getting more views because he's supporting that viewpoint. And eventually he just started saying stuff that maybe he didn't even believe in, but it was getting him views. I don't think Corey Good actually believes reptiles are living in Antarctica. I mean, if he does, I guess more power to him, but that's nutty. And my question is, if he's revealing this information that's never supposed to be revealed, why was I able to find his website on Google? Which is controlled, as we all know, by the pedophile, draconian, Illuminati alliance. (sighs) That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.